On behalf of the Belfast Industrial Trade Union Council, I would like to thank the Falls Community Council and the ICTU for commissioning this commemorative mural. I would also like to thank Gail Hart and Jerry and Ricky, who have done an excellent job on this uh, piece of work. Tomorrow is the 100th anniversary of the murder of two people in the Falls Road, and it's great to see their pictures here in this mural, because Maggie Lennon and Charles McMullen have been largely forgotten as they were not the victims of the conflict for national sovereignty. They were the victims of a conflict that has gone on for longer and continues to go on throughout the world. This conflict is the class conflict. Cynics will try and deny the existence of the class conflict here today. They will claim that the momentous events of 1907 are irrelevant to contemporary life, but they are wrong. Yes, when James Larkin arrived in Belfast in January 1907, he witnessed abject poverty, exploitation and injustice amongst the majority of the citizens, Catholic and Protestant alike. Filled with outrage, Larkin provided the working class of Belfast and beyond with the tools that to change their condition. Those tools were organisation into unions for those that had never been organised before, the collective strength of solidarity action, and the sympathetic strike to force the greedy, rich and powerful to take heed of the people's plight. But the bosses had the wealth and the power of the state behind them. They paid the lowest form of life, the scab, to break the workers. And when the police mutinied and went over to the side of the people, the bosses and their political representatives called in the army. It was the army that shot dead Maggie Lennon and Charles McMullen on the 12th of August 1907 during a clash with strikers and their supporters. Even the introduction of the army was not enough to break the solidarity of the working class. The independent Orange Order gave active financial support to the strikers, and there was also considerable sympathy with the sections of the Orange Order. The 26th of July saw a massive march through the Falls, the Shankill, and all the working class areas of Belfast. Horrified by the vision of working class unity, the employers used the old weapon to divide and conquer, the weapon of sectarianism. Spreading lies and rumours, they painted what was an economic struggle, struggle, a nationalist plot. This very street witnessed some of the poisonous consequences of that sectarian stirring up. Although the workers were eventually defeated in 1807, the struggle sowed the seeds for the future. Protestants, Catholics, dissenters, our parents, grandparents and great-grandparents, together with workers across these islands, organised the gaming unions and won for us the conditions we take for granted today. Those conditions better pay, shorter hours, holidays, pensions, access to third level education, the National Health Service and the welfare state. But what has happened to these victories? I come back to the cynics who deny the relevance of the lessons of 1907 to today. All the benefits working people have achieved over years of struggle are today under threat. The cost of living is rocketing and wages are not keeping pace. Alongside the increase in domestic rates, there is a plan to introduce a double taxation on us to make us pay twice for water charges. House prices have risen faster than anywhere else in the UK and homelessness is on the rise. Seven of the ten lowest paid regions in the UK are in the north. And despite government manipulation of the figures, the uh, figures still unemployment figures, we still have the largest unemployment levels in the north, particularly amongst the youth and the long term unemployed. We also have fuel poverty which is leading to the deaths of hundreds of pensioners every year on the streets of the north. Access to third level education is now being denied with tuition fees. The health service is in crisis. The welfare state is being dismantled and public services are being handed over to greedy private sector multinational companies who only want short term profit. All this while the rich receive tax cuts and big business is subsidised by public, public funds. As in Larkin's day, a new unorganised underclass has come to the fore. Around one third of the labour force are low paid workers with no protection in temporary or part time jobs. Migrant workers and new nationals are at the sharpest end of this exploitation. Racism is, ke is keeping people apart and stopping them fighting together for better conditions. And as for the attitude of the bosses today, not much has changed from 1907. The Inland Revenue Inspectors recently visited a sample of employers here to see if they were paying the national minimum wage. The result, two 
thirds of the employers were paying less than the £5.35 per hour minimum wage. Clearly the message of working to the people of Belfast in 1907 is still relevant today. To gain strength through solidarity we must organise in unions, become active in the running of them and turn them into a collective voice for the working people. The other lesson the trade union movement learnt in 1907 is that sectarianism is a divisive, destructive influence on the social, economic, political and cultural lives of our people. The policy of emphasising the interests of one section of our community alone will only weaken our ability to oppose the undermining of our conditions. And it is the same for racism. Only through the unity of all our people, Catholic, Protestant, dissenter, migrant worker, new national, can we achieve a better life for all. Thanks very much.